the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, 
raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was possible for him to be held by it. For David says to him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon this throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did the flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's work, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your future conduct, handed on to your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but, re but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Clopeus, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those of us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart 
to believe that all the prophets spoke? Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged them, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was in, was with them at the table, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, we were, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever failed to recognize someone that you knew pretty well, or at least you thought you knew pretty well? Yeah, I think most of us have that experience. I think the first time that happens is usually when we're kids and we see our teacher outside the classroom, either at a restaurant or grocery store or wherever. You know, I know in parishes that I've been in, when most parishioners see me without my priest collar, they definitely do a double take. You know, I also remember one time, very much as an adult, when I was in seminary and saw one of my old, one of my professors in a slightly odd circumstance. You know, this professor was a dear mentor to me and is still a very good friend, and I'd recognize her anywhere, or so I thought. Till one day when it was final exam week and I wasn't sleeping well and saw some strange woman in gym clothes who had clearly just finished a workout walking down the hallway and wondered, who the heck is this lady and what is she doing in our gym in the seminary? So of course she looked at me strangely and said, are you doing okay, Brendan? Oh, Doc, hi, yeah, fine. <laughs> you know, it happens to all of us. And I think it happens to us because we expect to see people in certain contexts. We expect to see people in certain lights and not in others. Now that's normal, I mean, we only have so many brain cells and I know most of mine are dedicated to obscure philosophers and old Simpsons episodes, so there we have it. You know, I'm happy with my choice, even if, like on that day, it maybe bit me in the rear. But what can we do? Well, for starters, I think I can and you can try to remember that people exist in more than just the context we're used to seeing them in. Admittedly, that's a hard lesson for all of us. It's a lesson we all have to learn time and time again in our lives but it's a very important one. People are more complex than we sometimes acknowledge. And yes, they have lives outside of us. And when we remember that, not only can we be better friends with others, but we can also grow in our relationship and in our understanding with the Lord as well. Let me explain what I mean by that. God is infinitely more than you or I can even begin to imagine. Now, I realize, of course, I'm not breaking any new ground here. But think about the implications of that. If God is infinitely more than we can imagine, it means that he is at work in a lot of ways that you and I cannot possibly understand. 
It means that sometimes you and I are going to have to get used to seeing God in an entirely new context. It means God surprises us. And I think that's something that all of us can say we've experienced in our lives, if we really think about it. And the thing is, sometimes we don't recognize God in those unusual circumstances or times. Sometimes it takes us a while to realize that God is infinitely more than we can understand. You know, the great philosopher and bishop, St. Augustine, once said, if you think that you understand God, then what you understand is not God. In other words, he was saying that the more we grow closer to God, the more we realize that we can never fully describe him, and we can never fully understand him. The more we grow in our faith, the more we realize that God's love is much deeper and broader than we can possibly appreciate. And I think that explains, at least to an extent, what the disciples are experiencing in our gospel reading today. The disciples met the risen Jesus on the road, and yet they didn't recognize him. Now, admittedly, when you really read the story carefully, that seems kind of odd. In fact, it seems like it should be almost impossible. These guys followed Jesus around for years. They literally sat at his feet and learned from him. And he told them that he would die, and he told them that even though he died, he would rise again from the dead. They wanted to see him. These disciples wanted to see him. They desperately wanted to have him back. And still, they did not recognize the Lord. How is that possible? Well, the gospel doesn't exactly say why they didn't recognize him. But if I had to give you my take, if I had to give you my hunch, I'd suspect it's for two reasons. The first is that they did know Jesus, or at least they thought they did. If you really think that you know someone, then whenever they do something different, it can really throw you for a loop. Whereas if a stranger does something different, you barely even notice. We're reminded that you and I and others are significantly more complex than we sometimes realize. And God is infinitely more complex than we are. And I suppose the second reason I would say that it makes sense is that we don't know what Jesus looked like after the resurrection. Perhaps he looked different than he did during his lifetime on earth. It's hard to say. The Gospels don't let us know. You know, as we've been journeying through this bizarre isolating and sometimes frightening time of quarantines and pandemics and stay-at-home orders, we've started to realize, I think all of us have started to realize that we're more complex than we thought we were. We have different needs, and our real needs and our deepest desires are different, different than what maybe we assumed they were before this struck. You know, certainly as a priest, I can see God at work in ways that I hadn't previously known. I see people in a different way when I have to reach out to them. I see being interrupted for an anointing call when I'm meeting not as a burden and a source of sighing, but rather as a reason to get out of the house, and even more than that, a reason to go to the hospital and to exercise my priestly work and to see Jesus Christ in action in that hospital in a new and in a different way. The writer and the Holocaust survivor Eli Weissel once famously wrote, the opposite of love is not hatred, but indifference. I think there's a lot to that. Because love is actively wanting what is best for another person, for their own sake. It's noticing another person and recognizing in them the fact that God is present, the fact that they are God's child and God's image. Perhaps this time has given us a chance to ask, what kind of indifference we've noticed in our lives. I know I've noticed an awful lot of indifference in my own life, and it's not been pretty to see. You know, right now, the people that we call heroes are not just our medical personnel and first responders, although they certainly are, but also the grocery store workers, the truckers, the railroaders, and let's be honest, the folks who keep the internet working. Gotta have my Netflix. But all too often, there are those people that we take for granted in our society, that we are indifferent to in our society. 
You know, when I used to work in a hospital as part of my seminary training, it became very clear to me that one of the groups that is on the front lines of infection control, one of the groups who did the most work to keep one patient's disease from spreading to the whole hospital, were the housekeeping folks, the janitors. Because by scrubbing down everyone's room and making sure that clothing and cloths were washed and that floors were wiped and sanitized, they kept germs from making their way around the hospital. And yet, how often do we acknowledge janitors as heroes? How often do we acknowledge them at all? You know, I think, brothers and sisters, that you and I are a lot like the apostles in today's gospel reading. Jesus Christ is at work all around us. And yet sometimes we don't notice him. We don't notice him because he's at work in the people that you and I don't notice. He's at work in the people that we don't see. You know, I don't think that many of us hate our brothers and sisters. Hopefully we don't. And usually people don't hate very many people at all. And yet, how often are you and I indifferent to others? How often do you and I fail to see Jesus Christ when he is right in front of us, talking to us? When we receive Jesus Christ in our hearts, we're able to notice others, and we're able to see in them our Lord. Can you see Jesus Christ today? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our, For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, who is at work within us in ways visible and invisible, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the body of Christ, the church throughout the world, that we, both individually and collectively, can experience the light of our faith in an often dark world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, ser who serve others, teachers, medical and legal professionals, and those who perform direct service to the poor, that they may be supported by our prayers and resources of society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who always seek to manifest a spirit of happiness and good cheer, that they may be rewarded through our positive responses to their gestures of kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the coronavirus, that they may be spared from this epidemic. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees, immigrants, and others who seek a better life, that they may be able to fulfill their dreams through the assistance of those who have the ability to help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been cast aside by society, the elderly, prisoners, and those who simply do not neatly fit in with contemporary society, that they may see their personal value and their human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Marceline, Hackwitz, Shirley, Gyrick, Tyrone, Thomas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The intentions for which this Mass is offered, people of the parish, Alex and Marion Ruffalo anniversary, Bernadette Geyser, Joseph P. Bosco birthday, Juan Carlos Lopez birthday, Mildred, Julian, Margaret, and Tatio. Rosalia and Paul Wodkowski, Victoria and Ray Tovar, John Kabai, anniversary, Damien Caesar, 30th birthday, Adelaide Munoz Perez, Father Joseph McDonald, Dennis Marzalik, Joseph Slasky, Sr., birthday and deceased members of the Wicker family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful Father, giver of life and of all good gifts, hear and answer our prayers and bring us with your Son into your kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, 
And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to, you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Theodora and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, with kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, good morning. I would like to uh, make a few announcements. As you heard, the uh, Governor Pritzker just uh, announced that we will extend the uh, stay-at-home order until the end of May. So we just have the announcement from the Vicar General also tell us the, we still close the church until further notice. And I'm, I know it's a difficult time for us during this time, but I ask you to continue to pray for one another. Please continue to watch the uh, live stream mass on Sunday, and we pray for one another during this time. I think it should be it's better to stay at home to protect ourselves and to to be safe. And also, next week is the uh, we start the month of May. It's the month of uh, of uh, to uh, you know consecrate ourselves to Mary. And the president, uh, Bishop uh, of Conference, Bishop Gomez, the uh, president of the U.S. Conference, had called the whole country to dedicate 
May first of this Friday for the day of prayer to consecrate the whole country to our blessed mother. So I ask you to, we will have the、uh, holy hours at three o'clock, and also to pray the rosary during the holy hours, and to pray that our blessed mother to protect us, to pray for us. And next Sunday we're supposed to have make make. Crowning and also the process in the round, but because of this we cannot do it. So next Sunday we have Sunday mass, and also after mass we will have May crowning, and Father Jeff will be the celebrant, and after that we will have May crowning together. So I hope you watch our live stream and pray, especially to our Blessed Mother during this time. And you know that the school is、uh, we close the school until the end of this year. So I know it's very hard for the students and for all the parents. I ask you to keep them in your prayers. And the teachers, they are doing、uh, working very hard to do the e-learning, so to teach our students from the online. And pray also for the graduation class this year. It's hard for them, but we try maybe a way to celebrate their graduation this year. So I think that、uh, I don't know what else do I need to say. But thank you, Father Brandon. That he's talking in very nice harmony today, and also you know he one of the 24 priests to sacrifice himself to go and anoint those who were、uh, affected by COVID-19. So I just ask you to keep him in your prayers, and you don't see him on Sunday Mass as often because I ask him to stay in his room. Quarantine himself actually to、uh, to protect himself and also to be safe for others. So let us pray for one another and let us try to be safe. And thank you, old genie, for the pantro and crack and all of us who celebrate the mass today. Have a good day. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless. You. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia.